Hello everyone. Welcome back to Foolish Engineer. This is the battery management system series where we talk about different subsystems inside the BMS. In this video, we're going to see one of the most critical components in a BMS, which is the cutoff switch or cutoff MOSFETs. From understanding why we need them to how to select and protect them. So stick around till the end. Let's imagine we are working on a project, say designing a battery management system product, with enclosure and all. Sounds simple, right? Until we have component delays, board fitting issues, thermal problems, or safety compliance. That's where Ultium develops saves the day. In this, we can capture all the requirements in one environment so everyone sees them. Then, its bomb portal helps to check the selected component availability, pricing, and life cycle status. For traditional schematic and PCB design, Ultium Designer is already there. But the Ultium Develop helps with MCAT ECAD code design for mechanical engineers to check the PCB fitting. When the design is done, we get a platform where team members review and give feedback on contexts like safety and pin maps, etc. After review is done, Ultium Develop generates release packages with up to date BOM and design documents. And it preserves version history so we know who approved what and when. Finally, Ultium Develop saves all of the data like version history to evolve the product during production. Our life gets easier with Ultium Develop. It is faster, safer, and smarter. If you want to develop a full electronics product, you can check the link in the description to know more about it. Think of switches as traffic controllers. They manage the flow of current. Imagine a busy intersection without any traffic lights. Then vehicles would collide, causing chaos and accidents. Similarly, in BMS, we need precise control to ensure electricity flows safely without causing damage or hazards. Conditions such as overcharge, overdischarge, and short circuits can be catastrophic for batteries and connected systems. Switches in BMS act just like these traffic lights. They allow us to safely disconnect or reconnect the battery from the load or charger precisely when necessary, ensuring the battery and other components remain safe and operational. Now we know why we need switches in BMS. But the question is why we specifically use MOSFETs. Imagine a water tap that's controlled electronically rather than manually. The tap doesn't need physical force, just a simple electrical signal to open or close. Similarly, MOSFETs are electronic switches controlled by voltage rather than current. MOSFETs come with two significant advantages that make them ideal for battery management. First is low drive current. Unlike mechanical switches or traditional transistors, MOSFETs require extremely low input current to control their switching action. Just a small voltage at the gate terminal can turn a MOSFET fully on or off. This efficiency reduces the energy needed to operate them, extending battery life. Then very low on resistance. When MOSFETs are switched on, they offer minimal resistance to current flow. This minimal resistance ensures that very little energy is lost as heat, significantly enhancing system efficiency and reducing thermal issues. These features combined make MOSFETs the preferred choice for precise, energy-efficient battery control, which gives us better safety, reliability, and performance. In electronics, MOSFETs are versatile switches, but not all switching scenarios are the same. There are two main types. First is power conversion switching. This involves rapid switching, often in kilohertz frequency. Due to high switching frequencies, the gate drive current requirement is quite high for fast transitions. This type of switching is very useful in power supplies, DC to DC converters, and motor drives. And second is load switching. Here, the MOSFET switching is not that rapid, usually for turning loads on or off, 
so it needs low resistance but not necessarily ultra fast switching. For battery management systems, we primarily use load switching. Here's why switching in BMS occurs less frequently, mostly during protection scenarios like overcharge or short circuit events. In battery management systems, selecting the correct MOSFET configuration is very important. Let's explore two popular approaches, high side and low side switching. In low side switching, MOSFETs are placed between the battery's negative terminal and ground. It's simpler to implement since gate drive voltages are within the battery's own voltage range, requiring fewer additional components. However, low side switching presents significant communication challenges like loss of signal reference. If the MOSFET disconnects, the ground reference may be lost, causing communication signals to fail. Because if there is no common ground, how the communication signal will get a reference. The low side circuit clearly shows MOSFETs placed on the negative line. When MOSFETs are off, communication lines lose their reference, complicating accurate signal detection and management. To overcome these communication issues, we can implement some simple solutions. First, we can use isolated communication like optocouplers to maintain proper communication irrespective of ground switching. Or we can just do high side switching where the MOSFETs are placed between the battery's positive terminal and the load or charger. It gives a stable, continuous ground reference, which is very important for proper system communication. However, high side switching needs additional components like a bootstrap circuit along with a charge pump because the gate drive voltage must exceed the battery voltage to turn on the MOSFET. There are so many high side MOSFET drivers which conveniently integrate high side switching with an internal charge pump. Despite requiring extra components, high side switching is typically preferred because it maintains a reliable ground reference for communication and offers perfect protection during faults. Choosing the right MOSFET is very critical here. Here's what we need to consider. MOSFET should have low RDS on. Lower RDS on means lower power losses. MOSFET should have lower gate charge or input capacitance. Higher capacitance means slower switching and more power needed to turn the MOSFET on or off. For faster response and efficient control, we should choose MOSFETs with optimized gate capacitance suitable for our gate driver. Then a proper gate drive voltage. We should choose MOSFETs that can fully turn on at available gate drive voltages. Current rating. The MOSFET must handle the maximum charge and discharge current for our BMS. And finally, MOSFETs should have adequate thermal dissipation capability. We have already created a very good MOSFET series where I talk about all of its parameters and how to select a MOSFET with datasheet examples. Well, controlling when and how the battery charges or discharges is very important to keep the battery safe and long lasting. Let's break down how this works in simple terms. First is charging mode, how the battery gets power. When we charge a battery, we are filling it with energy from an outside charger. What happens logically here, the charger is connected to the battery. The BMS checks the battery's voltage, temperature and current to make sure everything is okay. If it's safe, the charging MOSFET is turned on by applying a small control voltage to its gate. This lets current flow from the charger into the battery. The BMS keeps watch on everything. If the voltage goes too high or the battery gets too hot, it turns off the MOSFET to stop charging. Se second is discharging mode. When the battery sends power to something like a motor, we call it discharging. When a load is connected, the BMS first checks that the battery isn't too empty or too hot. If everything is okay, it turns on the discharge MOSFET using a gate voltage. This lets the current flow from the battery to the load. If the battery is discharged or gets too hot, the MOSFET is turned off to protect the battery. The BMS has a brain, either a small microcontroller or a special chip, that decides when to turn the MOSFETs on or off. It makes sure the MOSFET is either fully on or fully off. 
Sometimes it's smart to use separate MOSFETs for charging and discharging. Why? Because the current levels are different. Charging usually needs less current and discharging needs more. So we can use smaller, cheaper MOSFETs for charging and stronger, bigger ones for discharging. This saves money and improves efficiency. But here's something to watch out for. Each MOSFET has a body diode. That diode can turn on in one direction and let current pass when it shouldn't. That's why we need extra components like diodes or transistors to block unwanted current flow. What if we need even more current? That's where paralleling MOSFETs comes in. If one MOSFET isn't enough, we use two, three or even more in parallel. It's like having more lanes on a highway. More cars or current can pass through smoothly. It increases how much current we can handle. It spreads out the heat so no single MOSFET gets too hot. In scenarios involving parallel MOSFETs, we need to activate the gate of all of the MOSFETs altogether. Even slightest delay in this will destroy the MOSFETs. But it's not all smooth sailing. When we add more MOSFETs, we also add more gate capacitance. That means the MOSFETs take longer to turn on and off. It doesn't matter much for basic turn on and turn off. But it matters when we need to quickly turn off the MOSFET for protection. Also, even if all our MOSFETs are the same model, they're not always perfectly identical. Some might turn on a little faster than others. This causes small voltage ripples or oscillations, which can stress the components. Well, then how do we fix it? We must simply add a gate resistor individually for each MOSFET's gate. This helps reduce those voltage ripples. Also, we have to make sure PCB layout is clean and symmetrical. That way, all the MOSFETs share the current evenly. If we use multiple MOSFETs together, the BMS makes sure all gates get the signal at the same time. If there's a problem, like overcurrent or overheating, the BMS quickly turns off the MOSFET. Protection circuits are important to keep batteries safe and working for a long time. Here's a simple way to understand some protection methods. Inrush current protection, pre-charge. When you first connect a battery to a DC link capacitor, which is mostly used in the motor drives, there's a big rush of current flowing from the battery to these uncharged capacitors. This big rush can harm the battery or electronics. That's called inrush current. We have already seen important concepts about inrush current in this video. To stop this from happening, we use MOSFETs with current limiting resistors. These resistors act like a yellow light of a traffic controller. They slow down the flow of current when the connection is first made. Resistor makes sure the load turns on gradually without sudden power spikes. Then overcharge and overdischarge protection. Charging a battery too much can be dangerous. It could overheat or even catch fire. Discharging it too much can also permanently damage the battery. Controlling MOSFETs solve this by acting as gatekeepers. During charging, if the battery voltage goes too high, the MOSFET switches off to stop more current from flowing in. During discharging, if the voltage gets too low, the MOSFET again switches off, protecting the battery from getting drained too much. Well, we have seen some important things about this cutoff MOSFET so far, which are used in BMS. Next time, we'll go deeper into other blocks. If you learned something from this, don't forget to check the description for references. If you found this video useful, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more exciting content.